Do you think we'll ever get tired of pitting incredible creatures against each other? All signs point to no, considering all the different bouts we get to see every day. MMA fights, Freddy v Jason, your dad versus anyone who touches the thermostat. Fights are integral to the very core of our being as humans. Or so they say. Maybe we just like to watch things hitting other things. So today, I bring you a very strange, impossible, lopsided fight. Get ready. Hello fellow friends and philosophers, and welcome back to the most mind-bending channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your disembodied voice in the void, Keegan Hughes, and I'm bringing a question to the table that I never thought would be addressed. What if Nyarlathotep fought Siren Head? Crazy, I know. But we need to know. The general public must have answers. Before we ring the bell on this fight, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more big, big questions. Alright, let's get started. In this corner, we have Nyalarthotep, the crawling chaos, the god of a thousand forms, the dweller in darkness. With infinite forms and powers to match, this fighter has overturned entire societies and speaks for the cosmic outer gods. With an infinite win loss ratio, it's been a while since anyone has seen this unbelievable being even flinch. In the challenger's corner, we have Siren Head. Online creepy creature and fan favorite, this 40 foot telephone pole lures hikers in with the sounds of their loved ones and then eats them. Watch out, it might just start shouting incomprehensible numbers and phrases and make things extra spooky. Fighters, to your corners, are you ready? Set, fight. Wait, it, it's over? Al already? H how long was that? Did. Did you even have a chance to ring the bell? Wow, well, okay. <laughs> Nyalarthotep comes out on top. Not that anyone expected anything different. Okay, now that we've let that play out, let's try something a little bit different. It's obvious that the cosmic horror is way stronger than a relatively new forest cryptid. Pitting these two against each other would end in a very one-sided victory for Nyalarthotep. He would clap our poor Pole's head in a fraction of a second. No ifs, ands, or buts. There's just no comparing power levels on these two. It's like comparing apples to oranges. Wait, no. I mean apples to a fighter jet. Actually, it's like comparing apples to Goku. Yeah, that sounds about right. It would just be too easy. It's not very likely that Nyalarthotep would even be interested in fighting Siren Head. And even if something compelled him to seek out that fight, it would be over in zero minutes, zero seconds, two milliseconds. Unfortunately, our long, long boy would take a long, long nap. And if there were lots of siren heads, well, they would go extinct. Sorry, siren fans. So, that's that. I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching. Okay, fine. Wait up a second. Because I'm in a good mood, and because I like to have fun, let's come up with a scenario where siren head would have a fighting chance at lasting longer than an astronaut without a helmet. How are we gonna make this work? Well, one is an omnipotent, shape-shifting Lovecraftian outer god, a direct descendant of Azathoth, with the potential to enslave and ruin entire modern societies. The other is a telephone pole that chills in the woods making funny sounds until someone comes too close. Not exactly what I would call a fair fight. In order to even the odds, we're gonna have to nerf our insanity-inducing entity just a little bit. It's actually gonna be one heck of a nerf, so let's go through our Nyalarthotep vs Siren Head 2.0 patch notes. First things first, we gotta take all those otherworldly powers down a peg. No more insta-kills, no more inflicting immediate madness on anyone who views his abominable forms. Sorry. This means limiting Nyalarthotep's shape-shifting abilities down to a level where they are no longer limitless. It would be best to keep him from shifting into things that are incomprehensible to mortals. Maybe make him stick to shifting into plants, animals, and assorted man-made objects. Eldritch horrors are cool, but aren't much fun in a fight. We're trying to make this last at least a little while. We're also going to limit traveling between dimensions. I'm totally okay with traveling through three dimensions, because Siren Head can do that too. Any higher dimensions than that, and the lanky lad loses all ability to fight back. Speaking of other dimensions and things beyond human comprehension, no enlisting outside help, no bringing in outer gods or old ones, and no using their powers. Although I do think it would make sense for Siren Head to have a little help. Maybe give him access to all his Siren homies. There's probably a few dozen of them out there based on reports of different shaped entities spread across North America. 
So let them congregate and have the numbers advantage. Probably won't make a huge difference, but it's worth a shot. It would also probably be advisable to set some lopsided victory parameters. Let's not make it a fight to the death. Instead, it would be interesting to make it a bit of a hunt. Put both of them in the woods and see if Siren Head could survive an hour or something. That way, it's in a familiar environment that it's adapted to and doesn't have to play to the strengths that Nihilarthotep obviously outclasses it in. Or maybe it's a competition instead of a traditional fight, something along the lines of who can eat more humans faster. I can see Nihilarthotep falling into old habits and tormenting humans, really indulging in the pain and suffering before devouring them. Siren Head, on the other hand, would plow through these people snacks like chicken tendies on Super Bowl Sunday. Playing some nice dinner music from his sirens, he'd get his munch on for sure. I guess it's not really a fight though, so we would probably bring it back to the woods based hunt. In the end, it would be neat to start both of them at opposite ends of a national park and then set the timer for one hour. 20 siren heads versus Nihilarthotep. No holds barred, if one siren head is left standing, they win. Of course, there's nothing anyone can do to prevent Nihilarthotep from destroying the remaining cryptids after the fight ends and our silly rules disappear, but hey, that's a fight for you. Now, as the timer starts and the fight begins, I should probably mention that Nihilarthotep's intelligence did not receive a handicap for this battle. He is just as cunning, manipulative, and terrifying as ever. This is bad news for Siren Head, as it's hard to comment on the intelligence of a sentient speaker pole. It seems like a predator with killer instinct, but does it have human-like intelligence? Even though it uses information about its victims' loved ones to lure prey in, that doesn't seem like it has true sapience. It's just somehow playing back things that person has said before with some supernatural force. So it wouldn't be long before Nihilarthotep lured a few siren heads in by shapeshifting into a human and pretending to be eaten. Once the hungry loudspeakers were close enough, he could transform into a wide variety of killing machines. Weapons, construction equipment, a bomb, who knows. It's likely that at least half our siren head battalion would quickly fall to this strategy. We're down to 10 with another 55 minutes to go. Oh boy. The timer is the biggest factor here thanks to Nihilarthotep's sadistic personality. It is very possible that he would take his sweet time eviscerating the siren heads. We don't know very much about what makes them tick, but you can bet that Nihilarthotep would find out what scares and hurts them and use that to cause as much pain as possible. That's just who he is. Who knows? Maybe he would just give up on winning and do what he loves to do. Honestly, that's probably the one scenario where Siren Head would have a sliver of a chance at winning this contest. But until that timer runs out, Nihilarthotep would roam the woods, methodically culling each tree-shaped creature he came across. Like a lumberjack in a forest glade, he would knock down anything that looks like it might be a tall resource. All the while, while remaining Siren Heads would likely remain very still, doing their best to blend in with the foliage. Maybe one would let out a little siren whimper and that would be it for the skinny beast. As the slaughter progresses, Nihilarthotep would develop a taste for killing Siren Heads. It would be a totally different experience than humans. Much stronger, with very different reactions to pain and fear, it would be a brand new day for our awful outer god. This is actually the downfall of Nihilarthotep under this particular set of rules. It would be too much fun to drive Siren Heads to madness. So, much like he doesn't and humanity as we know it because he wants to continue basking in the glory of hysteria, Nihilarthotep would spare a couple siren heads. There's no way he could maximize his full cruel enjoyment in an hour. Like a hunter making sure they don't overdo it and doom a species to extinction, he would let the remaining creatures go free. So surprisingly, Siren Head would win this fight. But I mean, are they really winning if that means being subjected to lifetime after lifetime of immeasurable torment, suffering, and agony? And remember, this is a very strange fight with a lot of mitigating circumstances to make it enjoyable. I am by no means saying that Siren Head could ever go toe to toe with Nihilarthotep. What I am saying is that under a very restrictive set of rules, maybe Nihilarthotep would have too much fun torturing to ever achieve victory through extinction. How could he enjoy the delicious eternal aching of a species knowing it's at the whim of a sadist? without the species. A little far-fetched, but it was fun to consider. So, that's it. The answer to what would happen if Nihilarthotep fought Siren Head. Siren Head would die unless some wildly powerful referees stepped in and worked day and night to make it a fair fight. And well, I don't think there are any referees strong enough to control an outer god. Rest in peace, Siren Head. What do you think of the rules I imposed? Would they even make a difference? Let me know down in the comments. And before I let you go, let's turn back the clock and take a look at some of your more interesting comments from last time. V Aqui says, The siren is the only monster that scares me. Well, maybe reconsider your fears after this one. Creepy as it is, there's some dangerous stuff out there. Tori Wicks says, Siren Head exists. America, I think not. Yeah, it's probably how it would play out. Either they do a really big cover up or try to destroy them all. Jono says, dangerous creature, exist. People, let's worship it. 
yeah, no, that, that seems to be the way things go. And with that, we'll wrap up this episode of Life's Biggest Questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.